in some ways, I'm a seventh generation Canadian. Um, and in other ways, I, like most Canadians, I have other stories to tell. My grandfather went to Japan at the turn of the century teaching English with the YMCA. He fell in love with Japan. He came back and met my grandmother and took her back to Japan. So my father and my father's brothers and sisters were all born and raised in Japan. But our house was always uh, filled with things and stories and food and uh, language that came from Japan. And also he traveled in China and other places when he was young in the late 20s and 30s. So um, I've always, it's like a shadow self. Japanese culture has been part of my life. I was asked by my friend Gigi to come and uh, tell a story regarding migration to Canada. And uh, to that story, in the form of a food that I love to cook. So, and it's uh, without any, without even thinking of any food, I uh, took the food that originated in the north where I came from. The name of the food is what we call pinakbet or pakbet. It is a composition of the different uh, vegetables. And uh, of course, different vegetables have different tastes. Like, uh, I would say the bitter melon coming to Canada or to a new place would have for sure a bitter experience, which is not good sometimes. But we'll, we'll uh, show you the goodness in the end. And of course, we have the sweet potato. Of course, it's sweet. And we have tomato, it's some, somewhat sour, or sometimes it's sweet. And of course, another one as part of the pinakbet is the eggplant or the talong. We have the green pepper, sometimes it's, sour, sometimes it's uh, chili, sometimes it's not, or hot, right? Of course, uh, when putting them together, it makes a very good dish for everybody. Again, in relation to migration, with all the bitter experiences, the sweet experiences, putting them together after you are settled, it makes you a very good uh, experience how you succeeded, how, how you were able to cope up with the challenges that you experienced in the place where you are in, particularly in Canada where we are in right now, right? Like, like in a food, it, it becomes a very delicious, presentable, palatable to everybody when they are put together, be it sweet, be it bitter, be it sour. So that makes a good dish. In Canada, when we came here, it's not all sweets, it's not all bitter, but it's a composition or a conglomeration of the different experiences. That once we surpass those experiences, good or bad, then we can say, oh, I've been into that, I've been cleaning into that, until you got the very good position, the very good job. And then when you, are, when you are helping a fellow people from our own place, then yes, you can always say, just, just wait for the right timing and you will be there. Of course, with those uh, varied experiences that we had during the survival time, then we can be able to, to relate to other people and at the same time, we can extend our helping hands for them to succeed in a foreign land. So that is my experience and my story of migration in relation to the food that I prepared. And thank you for listening. Why is this special? Because you have to eat it when you um, give birth to a baby. So already when I was expecting uh, my child, I was sort of kind of 
saddened that you know nobody will bring me the soup. I was sort of, oh well, I'll be eating this hospital boring food. And uh, and the, the day came, and uh, our boy was born, and uh, I was sort of so sad that you know I won't be able to have the special soup. But that day, my, my husband Ross who is American, brought a big bowl of the seaweed soup. So I was just so shocked and so touched by his, he somehow managed to get this uh, ingredient and made the soup. And uh, he brought it to the hospital and it's kind of, it has a very special fragrance, sort of very seaweedy, it smells of ocean and uh, it looks black. I was just so happy to eat this food and it just helped me feel so much better and forget about the pain of the delivery and everything. Uh, so I had the one spoonful and it was kind of a little bit different from what I had expected because it turns out that he didn't wash the... <laughs> you have to wash the seaweed you have to boil quite a while to really, uh, you know, sort of uh, bring out the, the taste. But it was kind of very strange, kind of slippery. But I didn't want to discourage him. So I said, oh, wow, this is so nice. And I finished the whole uh, seaweed soup. And actually, you can see it. Um, this... Uh, there's something special about it because many Korean uh, people will think that oh, Korean cooking very similar to Chinese or Japanese, but this soup is nowhere can you know you can find this kind of soup only in Korea. But now I make the soup for my son's birthday every day, and turns out the soup has a lot of minerals and uh, like iron and iodine and uh, fiber. This is sort of soup really reminds me of home and also family because it's uh, a birthday soup and also uh, that's the first thing that you eat when you have given birth to a child. So I think it's a very culturally significant dish. And uh, even though there are no birthdays or nobody's giving birth to any babies, I would make this soup uh, at least once a month. And it just brings me, I feel home and, you know, happy and, you know, nurtured whenever I have this food.